I got to the computer and noticed that there's an 11 gigabyte update to the game. Which means the August patch has finally been released. Okay, so here we go. Stability, fix an issue, would get stuck in the main menu after accepting invitation, excessively drain. That has actually happened to me, so I'm glad they fixed that. Uh, to show other clan, clan, okay, I haven't really looked at clan stuff. Get stuck when dis- <laughs> That happened to me, I kept trying to disable the clan I had, and I couldn't disable it. That was like forever ago, I think I finally was able to do it. Uh... <laughs> Um, okay, that's good to know. It doesn't crash when it plays in certain situations. Um, okay. When the game is closed? Interesting. Added safety checks to prevent an out-of-range crash. Matchmaking screen. Um, okay. Achievements, which is nice. Oh, that's good because you kept getting the like winning with Bengalis or winning with Dravidians when you didn't even play with them. You're like, I wasn't even that Civ. My opponent was that Civ. How did I get the victory for winning as them? Or there wasn't even that Civ in the match and you get the object. Like it was, they were definitely some bugs with uh, your Dynasties of India's achievements. Uh, flares were difficult to see during some games. Interesting. I feel like sometimes it would feel like I missed the flare, but maybe it's just me reacting so late and I look at where someone flared and it was just like way too late. Um, but we'll see if that helps. Uh, idle pose for skirmishers. Oh, skirmishers were, I've never had that happen to me where skirmishers look too much like spearmen. Um, okay. Uh, when building unit has armor value of negative one, units had armor values of negative one. Oh, the houses did. Interesting. Okay. And rams did. Huh. I guess that's good. I'd never noticed that issue. Um, cool. You can see it in the quick play queue. Uh, okay, you can see the camel line properly. Don't know what was wrong before. Timers, um, all right. Nothing to... Players can no longer interact with multiplayer lobby, drop downs, and buttons when the map selection screen is open. Don't, didn't know that was a thing. Where I, I guess if you just accidentally clicked on the side where there was nothing seen, you could actually press buttons on the lobby. Oof, that's a good fix. Okay, diplomacy label for, for ally players during treaty is no longer different from the standard one. Games now be found properly with fresh button. Well, that's nice. I hope we can actually find games now. That has been an issue for a long time. And <clears throat> texture glitch, load screen. A lot of bug fixes. A lot of bug fixes. Oh, good. I've always been confused when I go to install a mop. A, a, a mop. A map mod uh, and there's like four of them and I install one and all four get installed I'm like oh that was weird so that'll uh, clear up some of the confusion and that's nice uh, let's get some background music going too there background music <clears throat> And settings. Co-op missions now properly reset all match settings that are default. Okay. This random save could not start. Okay, it's co-op settings. Civilization now did properly changing player color number. Um cool. Don't really know. Fix an issue where auto farm received hockey wasn't working. Thank you! Thank you! I have actually had issues with every time I play Gajars, I have to actually go to the mill and select auto recede i just thought it was a a, a con conflict with the like the sheep and the auto recede because the mills actually got you know like an ungarrison hockey because you garrison mill or sheep in there so i thought there was some conflict and that's why it wasn't working but apparently it just wasn't working in general uh but it was always so frustrating because like i leave my auto recede off always so i don't accidentally see more farms and have a bunch of you know wasted wood when i don't want to reseed farms like it can get really annoying when you're just waiting for that 10 wood to build that university and then a farm gets reseeded it's like well now i gotta wait for 70 wood uh so i leave it off until like mid to late castle age and then i turn it on 
and whenever I play Gajaris and I go to the middle to turn it on, it, it, the hockey doesn't work. So I have to manually go and select it. It's just super annoying. So I'm glad they fixed that. Thank you. Uh, oh, that's been, a, that's been an issue for like a year. I'm glad they finally fixed that. Uh, <laughs> that's been an issue for like four months and they finally fixed it. Well, they're fixing issues that have been around for like forever ago. That's good. And now to the exciting part, what everyone's here watching for gameplay adjustments. Well, civilization balances, I guess. Never mind. Maybe not gameplay, but still. Uh, depending on difficulty. Remove reaction distance modifier. Oh, so now if you play it on extreme instead of standard, the predators won't chase you across the map. I kind of like that because there always was that issue of like when, you know, setting up like lobby games or tournament games or whatever. And it's like, oh, no, I left it on extreme accidentally. And now that your wolf hill, not wolf hill, your gold rush with all the wolves map gets completely ruined because you try sneaking a veil all the way across, you know, the edge of the gold rush and they get attacked by 10 wolves. Yeah, uh, that's a good change. While it's kind of fun having, you know, wolves that are super aggressive chasing across the map in extreme difficulty, it doesn't really make sense and, ma and like it, there's no reason when the AI gets better against you that the wolf should act differently. Like if I want to play, you know, against extreme AI and have the settings that you would have in a normal ranked game, it the wolf should behave the same, right? So the fact that you can put it on easiest to not have the wolves be as aggressive versus standard and everything else it's the same six tiles that's great i like this a lot thank you it makes things more consistent there's like there's no reason to have it be you know 12 tiles away on extreme difficulty like just make it consistent and then there we go i like that or just have another setting of you know wildlife difficulty and you can adjust it and the rhinos kill you even faster or something but don't need to tie it into the ai difficulty so I like this change. Players are no longer able to push enemy units away during treaty by building foundations on top of them. You could do that? Oh, I didn't know you could do that. Apparently you could build something on top of another player's unit during a treaty and it just pushed their unit off. Weird. Um, oh, that's kind of cool. The panel of those units weren't affected by uh, the handicap system. Wait, that used to happen? I knew they fixed that you could tell when things were being used, but I didn't know that you could just tell that, you know, all the stone's gone. They're out of gold or out of stone now or all the gold's gone. They're out of gold. I didn't know you could do that. Interesting. Well, that's good that they fixed that because that's tied into them not letting you see resources being collected through the fog of war. And apparently you could still see them being uh, used up entirely, not just partially used up. So I'm glad they fixed that and found that issue. I didn't know that was an issue. Campaign, personally, I don't really care about the campaigns because I don't play the campaigns. I haven't played the campaigns. I don't plan to play the campaigns. Um, they're just not as fun to me as playing with people or against people. Um, so I mean, co-op campaigns, I may do one of these days because you get to play it with someone. That would be fun. But just single player campaigns, I'm just going to skip over this section because that doesn't interest me and I don't care about it as much. So skipping over this section, sorry for those of you watching who like the campaigns and play the campaigns. You can go uh, Google ageofempires.com uh, update. This web's you, can, you, you can't see that. Whatever. Age of Empires 2 DE update and you can easily find this you can even type in update 66692 and look at the campaigns if you want but i'm not going to look over it so that being said if you want to go do it yourself co-op uh yeah <clears throat> civilization balance what everyone cares about let's zoom in a little bit more 150 here we go crossbowmen research costs increased everyone was talking about this a lot of the strategies I was doing. Yeah, I know. Hey, Zarek, welcome. New update hype. 
Um, <laughs> you don't have to read it yourself. <laughs> this is what everyone's been talking about with regards to the new update of making Crosswomen cost more to research, which honestly I think is a good move because it's, it's been so cheap that pro players, when they have six archers, will just grab Crosswomen. Not even get Fletching or Bodkin, but they just grab Crosswomen because it's so cheap. Like, it's as cheap as... It's not as cheap. It's cheaper than Bodkin Arrow. So it's like, may as well just grab Crosswomen for my four archers, and then they'll, you know, do more damage against Spears. They have more HP. They get extra range and attack. I don't even need Fletching or Bodkin. I just need them to kill Spears. So you just... Five cross archers, you get Crosswomen. It's like... Pros would just do that because it's just so cheap. Like, it, it needed to be more expensive, I think. I'd really like this up, this uh, change. Elite Skirmisher costs like three times the amount as Crosswind costs. It's just insane. Elite Skirmisher is still more expensive, but this helps a little bit. Um, this does hurt a lot of the like super fast castle archer or crossbow plays. Like I like to do with Saracens a lot, where like especially in Empire Wars, where it's just like you instant go up to castle, drop like three ranges, grab crossbowmen, and uh, move out. Um, it definitely will hurt that a lot. It also would take some getting used to because so many players are used to, you know, 125 food, 75 gold, and then you can get crossmen. And getting cross with Bodkin was a lot easier to just do. And now it's going to be harder. You need more food, you need more gold. And now it might even be more of a choice. Do I want to actually get Bodkin and cross at the same time? Do I delay one of them? Um, and also, some players might even get Bodkin over cross by now. But I don't think that's going to, well, maybe. Um, because Bodkin affects more than just your crossbow line. Uh, but yeah. That's good. I like that. The Arbalest costing more, however. I'm not sure if that was necessary because it's already pretty expensive. I mean, for an Imperial Age tech, it's not bad. But, like, chemistry costs 300 food, 200 gold. Um, and that gets you a lot because it unlocks a lot of things. Bracers, 300 food and 3... Um, 300 food something? I don't remember. There's your food and something. So Arbalest already costs more than Bracer and Chemistry. So now players are going to delay Arbalest even more. Like they already would delay Arbalest longer than Bracer and longer than Chemistry in general. Um, and so it's usually the third thing to get when you get to Imp with your crossbows. Bracer, then Chemistry, then Arbalest. Because Chemistry takes so long, so you want to get it earliest as possible. And then Arbalest also costs more than Chemistry. So it's like Bracer, Chemistry, Arbalest. And now it's like... Okay, you get Bracer Chemistry and then Arbalest costs even more. That is like, is it even worth? Like, it's it's definitely worth getting. But it, I, I just don't know if making it that much more, it's not. It's definitely not going to change the priority of which of the three you get. Um, And I don't know. It just, it feels like that was unnecessary. But this will nerf Leary. So Leary going into Red Bull Wolo um, is going to have a much harder time winning because his Crossbowman and his Fast Imp Arbalest just got nerfed. So keep that in mind. If Leary loses Red Bull, blame the devs. Um, that being said, very interesting to see how this plays out gameplay-wise in the game. Um, curious to see if it actually affects things. I think it will, but I don't know how much. It definitely will make the low eco uh, imp timings a lot harder to do. Uh, Dark Age and Feudal Age Stonewall HP. Is this your favorite unit? Stonewall, Zark? Feudal Age and Dark Age Stonewalls, is this what you're talking about? Increase from 900 to 1080, and Gaze also increased. <laughs> um, that's just basically makes uh, Tower Rushes on Arena a little more difficult to do, uh, which I'm not a big fan of because I really love the Tower Rushes on Arena. Uh, but it doesn't, it's it's 180 HP. It's not that significant. It's not going to change that much. Um, so I don't really know what to say about that. It might make Stonewalling actually a little better just in general because already stone walls cost two more resources than a wood wall and take like two more seconds to build than a wood wall like it's not that much more and it gives you so much more hp than a wooden wall so it might actually make stone walls more usable than wooden walls on most games especially if you're trying to go once you see play anyways um we'll see how that affects things i doubt it's going to change much elephant archers uh cab archer so they increased their cav archer armor which used to have negative seven so that skirmishers and elite skirmishers or anything that did bonus damage to cav archers did an extra seven damage and now it's going to be an extra four which is still a lot still a hard counter against elephants but that's three less damage 
which is really good. So the skirmishers are going to do less against elven archers, even though they're still going to wreck them. Camel archers are going to do less. A lot of things are going to do a lot less damage, which would be really good for that unit. Um, but at the same time, it's still a hard counter. It's like they won't melt them as bad, but they're still going to melt them because I mean, skirmishers already do bonus damage anyways. So it will help, but it's not going to make them like OP or anything. Elephant Archer cost decreased. Oh, interesting. So it now costs 10 less food. Might even make a jar is a lot better with Elephant Archers just because they're going to be even cheaper in food costs. But that makes it a lot easier to mass them because they're so expensive and hard to produce. So Elephant Archers definitely got a huge buff. I mean, the Elephant Archer when Dynasties of India came out was nerfed so hard when it went from a unique unit to a generic unit. Um, Armored Elephant is now affected by Siege Engineers. I thought it was until I heard in the, uh, the, uh, public, what was it, or the preview update, whatever it's called, the, when everyone was talking about the, the potential changes earlier, I didn't know that they didn't get Siege Engineers. Uh, Elephant Archer is only this stream. I don't know about that, Dark. I don't know about that. I might try them out, though. I might try them out. Uh, personally, I think they're really good against uh, Cav Archer units and Archer units uh, because they tank so much damage. Um, so if your opponent is going like Crossbow or Cav Archers, I feel like Elephant Archers can do really well. I still remember that one game where I think it was NBL playing as Indians. I think it was against like Mongols, Cav Archers or, or Mangadai or something. And he went for the Indian Elephant Archer, Elite Elephant Archer, and caught everyone off guard. The caster was like so confused and ended up winning the game, being a phenomenal unit to tech into because the Cav Archers couldn't do anything against them. Uh, I remember that game. Don't remember all the details. I don't remember who was playing against ABO. But regardless, Elephant Archers, I think, are pretty good at Cav Archers. Granted, they still can get kited and not run by them, but if you can push and make them come to you, uh, they have so much pierce armor, so much health, or crossbows and arbalists as well. Um, but anyways, other than that, I don't know when to use them. When you want to just sit under town centers and not take damage and just idle their entire eco with one elephant and then walk them away and heal them up with a monk, that can be a great use for it too. War wagons can do the same. Um, so Siege Engineers now affect them. Starting resource and villager bonuses are no longer disabled in Empire Wars. So this, and I, I'm so glad the devs waited two days. Wait, is it Monday? No, one day. Waited 24 hours till after the Red Bull Wolo qualifiers were done before pushing this update. Because this would have drastically changed Empire Wars. And everyone playing the qualifiers would have had to play in the old patch, would have had to get the, you know, uh, the code to download the old patch and just would have been a huge headache for all the admins running the Red Bull qualifiers. So I'm glad the devs were patient and waited for the update so that they wouldn't throw a wrench into everything with Red Bull. Because, like, we've had issues with that in the past, like the previous Red Bull Wolo, where they ran a stress test on the servers for H4 during the tournament which just made the servers very unreliable, which really affected the tournament. So I'm glad they're, you know, doing better this time at not ruining something else that's going on by miscommunication and messing up time schedules and stuff. So thank you devs. Starting resources. So yeah, so Aztecs are going to get extra gold at the start of Empire Wars. Chinese, they're going to have three extra villagers in Empire Wars. Chinese are going to become an S tier 7 Empire Wars. Uh, but that also oh, hold on a second Maybe not because they're gonna have 200 less food and looms already researched I mean you're starting off with the what two two farms four berries at six another six on sheep So you're gonna have idle time. So you're gonna be at least two villagers ahead But that also means Chinese if you're up against them You're gonna know they're not opening scouts because they're not gonna have the food for scouts and they're gonna very much delay that first spear. So going scouts against Chinese could be really strong because they're not gonna be able to afford to spear because they have 200 less food. Not gonna be able to afford to be able to stable on scouts because they have 200 less food. So that might actually be, it'll be interesting. They might be an S tier Civ because they have like two villager lead 
right from the start uh but because they don't have food their options are a lot more limited they might not actually not be an s-tier sim now i think about it it's also only two more villas and you start with like 27. there's like 29 versus 27 like whoop de do you like is that even that great because you don't like chinese normally in rm you start with the extra village right at the beginning in dark age and so when you have three extra villas and your opponent when you start with six villas and your opponent starts with three that's a big difference when you start with 29 and your opponent is 27 that's not that big of a difference or sorry or 30 sorry so 30 and they have 27 it's not a big difference and then you're not gonna have food for double bed x not gonna have food for your spears not gonna have food for scouts so i don't know we'll see we'll have to see how chinese do in empire wars it'll be interesting um but huns have less wood huge nerf to them on empire wars because they initially started with all their wood there was no downside to the no housing bonus only upsides and now huns just got a complete nerf starting with only 100 wood means you can't instantly drop a stable you cannot instantly drop a range you're slower to get starting and it's just gonna make huns a lot They're, they probably dropped an entire tier in empire wars because of this losing 100 woods right at the start of empire wars incas they start with their llama i guess they didn't used to start with the llama i guess not sure i'm guessing that's why they're on here Lithuanians are probably gonna bump up a tier. You starting with 150 more food is just insane. Same with Persians, starting with 50 more food and 50 more wood. Wood is one of the most important things to start with that game because you you want your stable, your archery, and double bit axe, fight. There's so much you want to build right at the start. Persians are gonna be really good. Lithuanians will be a lot better. I mean, you have 150 extra food. It'll make fast castling so much faster. Man, imagine being able to fast castle really quickly with Lithuanians. Having starting the game with 350 food and 10 villagers on food sorry 12 villagers on food you could go up pretty quickly um mayans will have 50 less food an extra villager i think is a lot better than chinese because chinese has no food at all like you can't make a spearman you can't make a villager mayans can still kill a villa and a spear right at the start so they're fine and they have an extra villa over their opponent so i think mayans would be a little better sicilians having extra stone starting would be interesting it means they'll be able to actually like be able to build a a donjon because before like you bought a donjon and then you literally have no stone left like it's just terrible now you can build a donjon and a town center um so that'll help a little bit or you could just stonewall your whole map and still have stone for town center that could be really good as well good jars what are this oh the berry bushes Gajars don't have berries under their tc which would be really helpful actually because you don't want to eat the sheep with Gajars, and you only get four sheep on empire wars and so you really want that in your mill. So Gajaras definitely are going to have want to eat the berries. So that's gonna buff Gajaras and I know buffing Gajaras on Empire Wars. I hope they nerf Gajaras a lot this update because otherwise Gajaras is gonna be way too broken. And <laughs> oh boy, we got age advancement bonus. So Malay and Persians. And, or is this referring to it being cheaper? Are correctly applied for the starting age only when an age other than Dark Age is selected. So Ethiopians, Bengalis, Dravidians. Does this mean if you start in Feudal Age, you start with extra 100 extra food, 100 extra gold, you start with two extra veils, and you start with 200 extra wood? Bonuses for skipped ages before starting age are still disabled. I'm confused. Age advancement bonus are correctly applied for the starting age only when an age other than Dark Age is selected. So if an age other than Dark Age is selected, I'm very confused. Yeah, I don't, I have no idea. But bonuses for skipped ages before starting age are still disabled. So does this mean if you start in Castle Age, you don't start with 400 wood, but if you start in Feudal Age, you start with 200? I have no idea what this means. Literally no idea. Minimum buy price. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Minimum buy price for all non-Saracen civilizations with guild research is 
now set to 23 instead of 25. So there used to be a cap of basically, um, not entirely sure. Well, I guess maybe it makes sense why. But so with the market, when you drop it all the way to the bottom, I don't know if some of y'all have noticed, but when it gets close to the bottom, the buy price is one thing and then you sell again and the buy price doesn't change. Like generally, you know, it, it should drop every time, but it was capped. There is, or not capped, floored, I guess you could say. There was a floor where the cost to buy a hundred resources wouldn't go any lower, regardless how low the market went. And so you end up having a, uh, um so like you sell your wood all the way down to you know 14 but it costs 25 to buy it it's like which is nine more gold and when you know the price is like 30 percent commodity 30 percent of 20 which is the, the bottom price it shouldn't be 25 um and even for uh saracens and all of them it was 25 with guilds without guilds there like Saracens with their 5% like it was 25. It was the, the lowest it could go for buying which is interesting because if you dropped it all the way down It doesn't help you buying that resource again But then you sell it and it's even worse off so like buying when the market's all the way low it, And then selling it later isn't it kind of hurts you a little bit uh, But at the same time died. I don't know why the floor was there, but it existed So apparently they dropped it to 23 instead of 25 which now makes it a little better where the market is all the way bottomed out to just be like, oh, I need to buy a hundred wood for this, buying it and then selling that hundred wood like 30 seconds later when you finally have it doesn't hurt you as much because the price is now 23 instead of 25 to buy um, rather than whatever. I, I might have confused y'all even more. This makes sense to me because I did a lot of research on how the market works. Um, and yes, yeah, so this makes sense to me. Sorry, I probably confused y'all. I don't know if it made sense to y'all or if I explained it well, but anyways, I'm glad they're doing this because it seemed very arbitrarily high for the floor price to be at 25, especially with now that they changed it where it's dropping two instead of three. Um, and so I do like that they dropped it to 23 instead of 25 for all non saracen civs with guilds. It makes guilds a little better too, which is nice because it's one of those texts that other people don't really like. Um, and guilds is one of my favorite eco techs, by the way. Um, so I'm glad that it actually has more of a benefit now too, dropping it from 25 to 23. So it's not floored at 25 where it doesn't help you at the bottom mar market. Um, so I'm glad that's the thing. Bengalis, here we go. Moving on. So now we're in the sieve specific bonuses. Monks receive plus three plus three armor. That used to be a unique tech for Slavs, Orthodoxy, where it gave the monks armor. It was so rarely used that the Slavs got a different unique tech. It was considered one of the worst unique techs in the game. Not as bad as Atheism used to be, but still pretty bad. No one ever got it because like th three extra armor on your monks is going to help that much unless you're Aztecs. And to get it as a unique tech just seemed like a waste. But now Bengalis get it for free, which means their monks are going to be very tanky. Hard to kill with anything that's not light cap. So Bengalis might have become a monk sip. We'll see how that works in effect. Um, what is the Bengalis tech tree? I'm curious now. Hmm. Do they have... What's it called? Um, I'm going to look it up in the game right now. Uh, tech tree. Bengalis, do they have atonement? I feel like they shouldn't have atonement if they have that. They do. Okay. Counting them with monks isn't going to be as much of a thing anymore. So I was thinking one of the other counters would be atonement monks. And if Bengalis don't get atonement, then that would be a huge counter to their monk play would be atonement monks. But Bengalis do get atonement. So the only counter is really going to be light calf. Nothing else is going to really work. Um, elephant archers and armored elephants now receive the intended bonus damage from their current counter units. Oh, bonus resistance applies after the armor subtraction. Interesting. So they, they messed up their formula. 
And so now it's gonna just work differently. I don't know if it's better or worse. I don't know if this is a nerf or buff. No idea. That's all Bengalis get. This is not gonna change them. Yay, they have a little bit better monks. Like, there's terrible sieves still. What the heck? Bengalis are gonna remain bottom tier. Maybe their win percentage goes up one or two. Maybe. But they are gonna remain bottom tier sieve. That's just. No. Britons, receive access to treadmill crane. Their buildings can produce faster. Very rarely a treadmill crane researched in RM games. Deathmatch, however, changes Britons a ton. Treadmill crane is one of the most important things for a civ, at least as far as I know, I don't play deathmatch much, to a civilization because building all your buildings 20% faster right at the start is so helpful for civs. Um, so that will make Britons better in deathmatch. I don't know how much it's going to affect the normal arm games because it's not really researched much. Burgundians. Okay. Cousillier. Finally, the devs realized Cousillier are a really strong unit and their charge attack has been reduced from 25 to 20. So five less damage on charge. I think this will work. This is a good solid nerf. And then the elite goes from 30 to 25. So the elite still works the same charge attack as the regular. I think this is really good, really good change for them. Uh, and then the economy technology discount reduced from minus 50% to 40%. I think that's pretty solid. Um, I don't know how much it's going to change. It'll make uh, it's 10% more costing. Um, so what? Double bed axe is going to cost 60 instead of 50 food now. So it's 10 more food for double bed axe. It's not going to change too, too much. I think it's a good solid nerf because in my opinion, Burgundians had the best economy bonus in the game. Hands down. Better than the Viking bonus, better than the Teuton farm bonus, better than the Celts bonus, because it didn't really cost you much to pick up those ecotechs. Like double bed axe costing 50 food, 50 wood, it would pay for itself very much before you even click up Defeatal Age and didn't put you behind Defeatal Age. Unless you're trying to go for like a 17 pop up, it did not put you behind going up. Uh, and being able to get, you know, both saw and Feudal Age and two man saw and castleage and you know heavy plow and horse collar for cheaper and you know wheelbarrow and handcart for cheaper too like it's just insane how much that bonus did for the sieve so i like that they're nerfing it a little but not nerfing it too much i'm glad they're not completely taking it away because without the discount they were not that great of a sieve because you couldn't even afford double bed axe early on uh, so nerfing it this much, I think this will be good. Also, you can just watch the sieve and see if the nerf is enough. If it's not enough, I feel like it's probably going to make Burgundians a lot more balanced of a civilization. I really like the changes they did there. Byzantines receive access to treadmill crane. They're giving treadmill crane to everyone. Britons, you can have it. Byzantines, you can have it. Frank's got it like 10 updates ago. Like they're just giving treadmill crane to everyone. What's up with this? Makes Byzantines a lot better in deathmatch not to mention your town patrol well everyone gets why well, I'm, 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 i don't play deathmatch treadmill crane for byzantines they're a lot better in deathmatch now too cumans fix an issue where some cumin herdable animals oh. <laughs> yeah this was a bug that was found where on it was a map bug i'm pretty sure that the map itself you're starting sheep it was a mix of a map and sieve bug. The start, so you know on Arabia, how you have one sheep that's in your possession at the start of the game, one sheep. Uh, when you have, you know, when you play cumins, that one sheep you started with had 50% more food on it. Don't know why it only happened to cumins, only cumins. Um, was a weird bug that the one starting sheep you got on Arabia or whatever map it was, it didn't matter. It's if you start it in possession of that sheep, it had 50% more food on it for your cumins. If it was Bay from Hidden Cup, where you started with an extra one, if it was some other map script that someone made where you started with one sheep, you had 50% more food on it. And it's 50 food. It's not that it's not game breaking, it's not that big of a deal. But it was a funny little bug that cumins got 50 more food on one of their sheep at the start of the game. Uh if you started the game with possession of a sheep. So it was kind of funny. Um, so that's the cumins there. <laughs> Dravidians receive bombard cannons. This helps the Imperial Age a lot because Dravidians just died to Onager. 
They have no cavalry to snipe siege. Their skirmishers are great, but skirmishers and arbalists are going to die to onager. Literally, their only counter to onager or siege onager was onager of their own. And that's not a good counter to it. Literally, if you have to match your opponent's unit to counter it, that's not a counter. Uh, so, <clears throat> receiving bomber cans will help their late game against onagers and siege onagers a lot. But they're still gonna die to Maganels and Cassa. They still have, they don't get redemption. They still have no cavalry to snipe Maganels. Literally, all they can do to counter Maganels is add their own. You're playing against Kelsa Dravidians, just GG. Like, there's nothing you can do against Maganels. So, while this is a good change to the late game, Dravidians are still gonna be garbage in Castleage against strong siege ships. So, yeah, they can take one shot and then die on the second shot. What if your opponent has two onagers? What are you going to do then? <laughs> All right, uh, Chaz is 69. You want to get banned, I see. Um. Mm. There we go. Someone wanted to get banned. So Dravidians, Bomber Cannons, it would definitely help them. In their Imperial Age, but it does not fix their castle age, and they're still, I think, gonna be a terrible 1v1 Civ. Just my personal take. Maybe they'll be proven wrong, and maybe they'll actually have an above 50% win rate on the ladder now. We'll see. Alright, Gajaras, what everyone's been waiting for. Gajaras, Elite Shivam Rider, Full Agility Recharge Time. Is that what it's called? Full Agility? Increase from 15 to 20 seconds. Okay, so the bar recharge is a little slower. That bar charged really fast. So it charges a little slower. Mounted units, additional bonus damage reduced from 50% to 40%. Okay, their camels are just gonna be slightly less strong. It's not gonna change that much. Their camels are still gonna be super broken. Their light cav, I really wonder if this changes, because before, like their light cav could kill a monk in one less hit because of the bonus damage increase and it affects light cab bonus damage against monks i wonder if they can still kill a monk in one less hit than they could before curious to see how that works elite shivam rider upgrade cost now matches the intended amount oh so they apparently intended it to be a certain price and it was cheaper for some reason weird 850 food 500 gold interesting <clears throat> i'm guessing that's more expensive Ooh. Fix an issue with the Shivam Shriders cannot dodge the nearby blast damage. Whoa, 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 whoa. So Shivam Riders are supposed to block blast damage? They just got stronger. Uh, Onagers and Bomber Cannons are gonna struggle against them more. The calculation of the food income from garrison herdable animals now uses a non-linear calculation where garrisoning additional herdable animals has diminishing returns. 15 times in food amount divided by 200 plus one. Where food amount is the sum of food in all garrison heritables. Okay. So. Huh? Don't tell me if you put a zero food in your mill, you get 15 food. Did they screw up the calculations here? Am I looking at this wrong? If you have zero in your food amount, divided by 200 plus one, that's one, right? 15 times one is 15. So you get 15 for just having a mill? That's gotta be a, a typo, right? Or the mill has to have something garrisoned in it for it to count. Maybe there just has to be something garrisoned in it. So on hyper random, if you have a one food sheep, you can stick that in your mill and you'll still get 15 out of it. Plus 1 over 200. If you have two sheep and you stick it in, you'll get 30. If you have one sheep, stick it in, you'll get, what, like 27? No, 22. Sorry, I can't do math. Huh. I do like the diminishing returns aspect of it. Um, yeah, Zark, I do agree with you that siege elephants 
should definitely not get the mounted bonus damage. I think the bonus damage should literally just be camels do extra and negate the light cap against monks and negate the siege elephants and just apply to camels. That would be better, I think. I agree. Um, so this means garrisoning more herdables or have diminishing returns, which I think is good because maxing out the mill, um, like having your allies send your sheep can just be a huge game changer. And having to build more mills hurts your economy even more in the early game. That like be like having to build more mills to get better food income. I like it a lot. Also the food, I feel like becomes completely useless in imp. Like by the time you get to imp having, you know, cool. I have eight sheep in my mill. I'm an imperial age. Whoop to do. I have one extra villager than my opponent in imperial age. Instead of 80 farmers, I have 81 farmers. Like it's not going to make a single difference. So that's like not even as you know it's like one burgundian relic woohoo so i feel like having it to where as the game gets later and later and you can actually start adding more and more mills that and spread out your sheep as the game goes on is good for the sieve so that way like late castlage the bonus still feels like it's working for you and that not eating your sheep was worth it because currently it feels like not eating your sheep isn't really worth it post temp but now you could have eight sheep in eight different mills and get a lot more food from it and have like five farmers instead of one extra farmer in imp so i do like the change i do wonder if it just buffed gajaris and i think they need to nerf something else because gajaris has been the dominating sieve and i think it's going to be the dominating sieve even more because their eco i think just got buffed because you can build more mills um and their like their dark age eco i think might have gotten nerfed like their dark age eco got nerfed i think but their feudal age and castle age and imperial age eco just got buffed and <clears throat> i don't think that's going to nerf gajars at all i think this is more of a buff than a nerf and i don't think this is gonna nerf them enough that i think gajars are still gonna be number one save on the rank ladder and i think the devs are gonna have to find a new way of nerfing them because this just seems like Gajars aren't nerfed enough, in my opinion. We'll have to see. Hindustanis. Gulam, HP reduced by 10. That's a really good change. It's a huge nerf. 10. Uh, that unit is very OP. And they lose access to Halberdier, so they're no longer one of... Or the... They're no longer the only camel sieve that gets Halberdier. Uh, Saracens don't get Halberdier. Berbers don't get Halberdier. Now Hindustanis don't get Halberdier. Uh, Malians don't get Halberdier. Um, what other camel slips are there? Saracens, Malians, Hindustanis. Gajars don't get Halberdier. Turks don't get Halberdier. Like, <laughs> Turks isn't really a camel slip, but you get what I'm saying. Pretty much all, like, camel bonus related sibs don't have Halberdier. So now Hindustanis don't, which is good. Yeah, I think Gajars are still gonna have a 60% win rate on the ladder completely agree so i'm really glad they're losing halberdier to not be the only camel bonus sieve that has access to it and then the gulam's getting nerfed which i think is good because that unit should still shred archers but not shred everything including which <laughs> that's not an archer uh yeah but guess what humans aren't a camel sieve you know what they're missing heavy camel <laughs> uh I agree with you, Mango. And I think that's good because Hindustanis were like the second best sieve on the ladder. So the fact that they successfully nerfed one of the two dominating sieves is good. Even though if they missed one, it's, they're still on the right track. Koreans. Um, so apparently Elite War Agons, just the Elite, not regular, has the Cav Archer reduced from zero to minus one. So Elite War Wagons aren't going to be as strong. I wonder if the regular war wagon has minus one. I bet you it does. And so they just matched it. Um, so elite war wagons aren't going to be as OP against skirmishers. Malay, everyone's getting treadmill crane. Britain's got it. Byzantines get it. Malay gets it. This sieve, you get it. You get it. You know? Oh, would you look at So the guilds thing, everyone. So remember how we were talking about how guilds how without guilds, I'm pretty sure this is the, the, the price it was to buy. But when you get guilds, this price never changed. And so now they dropped it to 23, which it should reflect what it, you know, 
better of what it should be because you know the price is 20 and then when you have 15% 23 is what it should be um and so instead of the 25 which is what it was at 30% so the fact they fixed it for guilds and now Saracens just got buffed slightly that it's now up to 25 so this or not 25 down to 21 which is good um this I would say buff Saracens because one of the things that's great to do with Saracens is when someone has let's say bottomed out the wood market say your Saracens and imp and one of the opponents just bottoms out the uh the wood market and there's still plenty of gold on the map or it's a team game and you have trade um sometimes it's better to just take all your bills off wood but like i'm just gonna buy it because i can get literally four times the value out of my villager if i mine gold and then buy the wood i can turn all my 20 lumberjacks into 80 lumberjacks by buying wood because it's a fourth the amount of resources it costs to get like I, I turned 25 gold into 100 wood so like the fact that you can the price is now even better 21 to buy uh so if you know the wood price gets bottomed out or the food price gets bottomed out like you could just start buying it easily um it, it helps mostly with team games where gold's infinite 1v1s where there's very limited gold uh it's not as helpful at all so it's more of a buff towards Harrison's team games uh, where you could just delete 20 lumberjacks and add 20 trade cards because you can start buying wood instead of selling it. Um, anyways, I do like this change. It's nice. It's a very specific situation. It's a situation I've found myself in though, but very specific situation. Sicilians, bonus damage reduced from 50 to 33%. This is a lose access. Whoa! That's the first time I've seen them lose someone lose access, so... Britons get treadmill cream, Byzantines get treadmill cream, Malay get it, and Sicilians, nah, they <laughs> they can lose treadmill cream. <laughs> Honestly, it's a good, it's good because the fact that you can build your castles 100% faster and get treadmill cream for an additional 20% faster is just stupid. Because then you can start building your castles 120% faster. So yes, I do like the fact they lost that. I do like that. Uh, the bonus damage reduction seems a little, uh, it seems like Sicilians were nerfed in the wrong areas. I personally think Halbert Cavalier is what makes Sicilians broken. That and First Crusade. Halbert Cavalier, we have plus two pierce armor. You have more pierce armor than a paladin. I think if you just made the, the bonus like they have Tatars, where it's plus one, plus one, instead of plus one, plus two. It would help a lot because then Halberg's aren't going to shred every single unit that is, throws a projectile. Um, so the bonus damage resistance, like, yeah, it's hard to take on them, but they don't have that much melee armor. They're not paladins. They're still worse than paladins in a melee fight. And so throwing halberdiers at them still works and is cost effective. Um, it definitely will nerf Sicilians a lot, but it also really hinders their feudalage play because they used to be a really good at going full scouts because spears had a hard time countering them now spears are going to be a better counter and it's not going to feel as great going full scouts as sicilians and taking on spears as sicilians it's definitely going to feel a lot harder to do um and so sicilians early game gets nerfed along with their late game and i think their late game is what's more needing the nerf than their early game their early game struggles because yeah, you get double food on your horse collar, but that doesn't really help you until castleage. Like it's castleage when that pays for itself, not feudalage. So the feudalage has definitely gotten worse, and I don't know if that's good for Sicilians, because now they're going to be played as more of a let's get to late game as opposed to let's go all in scouts, um, making them more one dimensional than they used to be, which I don't think is good. Tunes. Hey, and Tootins lose treadmill crane. What is with this treadmill crane? That is like Sicilians and Tootins. They shouldn't get treadmill crane. <laughs> Why? What's up with that? Uh, random maps. Okay, so that's all the sieve balances. Interesting. Well, for the most part, I really like the balancing that they did. There are a few of them that I'm not a fan of. Kajar is not getting enough nerf. Dravidian is not getting enough buff. Bengali is not getting enough of a buff. Um, Burgundians, I loved. Yeah, there, there were a lot of really good ones. 
I guess it's historical accuracy. Yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> guess so. Yeah, I've gotten it like just a couple times. There was one time when I got it with Sicilians because I wanted to see how fast my castle's built with an extra 20% faster speed on it. I think I did that like once. And there have been a few other times where like I'm in post imp and I'm just like, I need to get a lot more production buildings down because I'm losing ground and I research treadmill cranes so I can just build more and more production buildings as I'm slow falling. So I definitely have done that. Got a treadmill crane to get buildings just out in the field a lot quicker. Uh, new maps. Let's go. This is a fun map. I really like this in the Red Bull Wolo Legacy Qualifiers. Morse, where you got a ton of fish and wood in the center. It was an Empire Wars starting map. Um, and it was fun because you just, there's so much food and you can test the center over the food. There are other maps like uh, Sacred Springs where you got a bunch of shore fish and like the edges. But this one is like all concentrated in the center. It's like Atacama, but with food, which is kind of cool. Um, and it's wood too. So it's like even more of a, uh, a fight over the center than Atacama is because you got wood and food. And so just, just very aggressive. Uh, you can do some very interesting things with a really fast food income. <clears throat> Yeah, no bull, sad face. I don't think Microsoft was happy with, uh, you know, promoting another company in their game by putting a map that literally promotes that company. <laughs> they don't want a like Red Bull specific map in their game. Why would they, you know? <laughs> they, they're gonna w rather put a Microsoft map in the game, not a Red Bull map in the game. So leaving out bull, Shoals. I never actually played this one, but it looks interesting. A ton of shore fish in the center and golds on the sides. Very interesting. Yeah, no, it was a really cool map. I agree. <clears throat> I very much agree with you, Zark. Migration. Oh, interesting. One of the players wanna get buried sometimes. That's annoying. <laughs> I saw a post like this about this on reddit once where someone apparently got no deer and their opponent got all the deer on the map <laughs> and they were so mad <laughs> so I guess that is where that comes from uh interesting so islands has more gold variety and more stones so that if you get landed and taken off one of the resources not completely killer blow I like that okay no long and narrow shapes <laughs> interesting you're forcing out further the AI I um, don't really know what all this is. Wait, the extreme difficulty AI never built castles until imp. That's funny. Um, <laughs> Deathmatch AI would immediately build lumber camps. You start with thousands of wood and like, we need to chop wood. Forget building castles and tables and barracks and archery ranges. We need to chop wood. That's funny. Oh. What? They I used to build a dog before I love her kids. Uh, so the AI is going to be stronger than before. Pathbinding. Let's go. Let's hope this is fixed. Units no longer go a few tiles in the opposite direction after receiving a movement task when they are previously chasing a unit down with the attack command. You try attack. Oh, that's why they used to do it. I didn't know that was the bug. You're chasing a unit down and then you want to send them away and they go the opposite direction, run right into the pikes and die. That's what used to happen. So now they're supposed to not do that. They're supposed to listen to your command. Lucas versus AI tonight. <laughs> I don't want to lose, Zark. What are you talking about? 
You want to get beat by some AI? Fix an issue to avoid villagers going idle. They, the identical words in a previous update. Identical words. Ah, here. Okay, it's not word for word. Not word for word, but I found the patch. Supposedly an update 63482. Villagers shall no longer go idle when gathering resources near walls. Fix an issue to avoid villagers going idle when gathering resources near walls. Villagers should no longer go idle when gathering resources near walls. Like, come on. <laughs> they said they fixed it before. It's an issue that's been so annoying. And they say they fixed it again. Let's hope it's for real this time. Let's hope it's for real this time. Come on. Like, almost word for word, but not quite. Same thing. Uh... Oh, yes. Thank you. So if you start gathering berries with a villager while another villager is building the mill and the mill gets built, the villager will often, instead of dropping it off the newly built, built or newly built mill, they'll just walk to the town center. It's like the mill's there. Like, why are you doing that? It's like, it's, it was so weird and annoying. And you'd have to babysit your villagers when you did that. Uh, so that's nice that they fixed that. Uh, apparently scout units could teleport. So no more teleporting through foundations. That's good. Uh, modding, which I don't really do. Scenario editors, I don't really do. So ongoing. <clears throat> Coming up. Just another, uh, cool. Another event, I guess. Penguin party, whatever that means. Cool reward. <laughs> nice puns. Cool. So yeah, that is this update. 